What's up YouTube fragrance family and friends? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another video review. Today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at a brand new release that came out earlier this year. Actually, I don't know to the day when this was released. It was a few weeks ago, month ago, two months ago. It was another one of those kind of stealth releases, kind of a quiet release. And it seems to be the way with a lot of fragrance houses. The fragrance we're gonna take a look at, however, is from the Extreme line of fragrances from Michael Kors. It is Extreme Journey. So when we return, I'll unbox this fragrance, give you my first impressions. That and more is coming up, so stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having an awesome day. I'm really happy that you stopped by. Today we're gonna to be looking at a new release from Michael Kors in the Extreme line of fragrances called Extreme Journey. It's interesting that they use this phrase because a lot of times when people talk about their experience with fragrance, they call it the fragrance journey or their fragrance journey because it is kind of a journey. You know, you first start collecting fragrance when you're a teenager, when a parent or an influential family member or friend introduces you to fragrance. And so over time, over the course of time, you purchase something to display your fragrances in. And overall, it becomes then a journey because you learn more about what fragrances mean. It's not just something that you spray on and take off and you smell good. There are a lot of things happening when it comes to, to fragrance. So extreme journey, Pretty cool name, an appropriate name. Now, the Extreme line of fragrances by Michael Kors. Originally, Michael Kors released their flagship or pillar fragrance back in 2001. It was an excellent tobacco-based fragrance. I believe it had pipe tobacco as the primary ingredient in the heart of the fragrance. Kind of gave it its overall ambiance or smell or aroma. And then they re-released it in 2014 and it was a little bit uh, less than stellar. For whatever reason, they took out tobacco the main ingredient that created the uh, kind of unique aroma of Michael Kors for, for men. This is now just an okay fragrance. I have all of the other line here. I'm not gonna pick each one of these up and discuss them. There are a total of five fragrances and now six when you add Extreme Journey in the line of fragrances. There's Extreme Night, Extreme Blue, Extreme Rush, Extreme Sky, Extreme Speed, and now of course, Extreme Journey. So let's go ahead and bust into the package and we'll take a look at the presentation. As you can see, the box has this nice bronze or brown gradient or gradation on it. It says Extreme Journey on the side, and Michael Kors on the very side of the box. There's nothing on each side. The very top, there's nothing. On the bottom, you have the UPC. And on the very back, you've got your ingredients listing. The inside of the box is black. Pull down the flap and then you've got your fragrance. Pretty much a small rectangle. Now each one of the extreme line of fragrances by Michael Kors, including Extreme Journey, are eau de toilette concentration and they are all 3.4 fluid ounces or 100 ml bottles. The bottles themselves are pretty much clear or transparent with a slight gradient. It is uh, in the middle of the gradient. It is the clearest and then it gets a little bit darker where that little bit of a bronze on either side. It's kind of a cool look, so I actually do like that. The Extreme line of fragrances are an interesting line as a whole. I think they're, they're really solid, but when you start taking them apart individually, you may find that there are certain ones that you like over certain other ones. I would say Extreme Blue, Extreme Sky, and maybe between Extreme Rush and Extreme Night are my favorites. Again, taken as a whole, it's a pretty good line break them down individually, you might find a few that you don't really care for. Now the note breakdown in Extreme Journey is relatively simple, so let's talk about what's inside the juice. Extreme Journey by Michael Kors features top notes of pink pepper, with heart notes of patchouli and atlas cedar, resting on a base of leather. So pretty simplistic note breakdown. Overall, you've got an open of pink pepper, you've got atlas cedar and patchouli in the heart of the fragrance, which is interesting because normally woods and the earthy patchouli are the base, 
that most fragrances rest on, but the base of this one happens to be leather. So hoping it's gonna be slightly rough, something kind of hang your hat on in terms of resinous and rough. Let's go ahead and test out the juice. Now I'm not gonna use a tester strip just because I don't want to. I'm gonna go ahead and try this out on skin just because I got out of the shower just a few minutes ago. I'm gonna, ah, it's pretty good atom atomizer actually. I don't remember the other ones being quite as good. I'm just gonna throw this, oh, okay, hello there. Wow, okay, I can pretty much tell you by what I'm catching in the air of Extreme Journey that this is very much like a Terra d'Hermes alike. And I'm not saying that that's what Michael Kors was trying to do is, is mimic or imitate or clone Terra d'Hermes by Hermes. It's become very popular. It's very high quality fragrance. And a lot of fragrances try to kind of emulate the overall air, aromatic feel, vibe, or ambiance. Kind of a lightly sweet. Pink pepper as an introductory note is very welcoming. It's very bright, very aromatic, welcoming, similar to a lot of fougeres that include like black pepper, uh, or something that's a bit more of a sharper tincture. It's just a nice, bright opening. It's got kind of that spicy, warm appeal. Pink pepper often comes before resinous notes like elemi or styrax or benzoin, or in this case, leather. It's impossible not to make the comparison of Terra d'Hermes to Extreme Journey just because it's there. It's so there. There's a This is a relatively simplistic scent profile. There's not really a lot of places that you can go when you smell this. Honestly, this simple, true DNA is a masterstroke in my mind, simply because we're all looking for fragrances to pull back a little bit from the complex multiplicity, be perfect for every occasion, be hyper versatile. I do feel like this is writing kind of a nice fine line of fragrances that are trying to appeal to a broader audience. So would I call this mass appealing? I feel like it is mass appealing, but you've got to ask yourself, do I like leather? If you don't like leather, you know, if you don't like that, that warm, very lightly medicinal smell that verges on orange, then you're not going to like Extreme Journey. If you don't like Terra d'Hermes, then you're not going to like Extreme Journey. I really like how Pink Pepper introduces the DNA and then how it rests on the woods. It's very easy to pick out the notes in this. So you get that pink pepper in the open. Leather is fully permeating this DNA. So you definitely smell the leather. It's like a kind of a light suede with a very light hint of medicinal. And then in the background, you've got a really nice dry woods with a little bit of earthy patchouli to back it up. Overall, I really do admire Extreme Journey. Kind of a break from the trying to be mass appealing, which most of the extreme line are what I would term mass appealing designer fragrances. But I do like the fact now that they're going a little bit more lightly elegant with the whole idea of leather. Uh, as a leather based fragrance, this could be definitely worn casually, but it also could be worn dressed up because again, it has that light medicinal quality that is very much a part of Terra d'Hermes and other suede or leather based fragrances. I, I like that though. It's it's a nod towards the finer qualities that can sometimes be found in designer fragrances like Michael Kors Extreme Journey. It is definitely a fragrance that I'm looking forward to wearing more in terms of longevity and performance and sillage trail. Projecting pretty well, but it's not going to be one of those beasts of longevity, I don't think, uh, or beasts of projection. So it's not really a harsh it's more of a lightly warm, welcoming, slightly resinous kind of fragrance. So it's definitely going to be appropriate for the workplace. You can wear this pretty much anywhere. There's nothing objectionable about Extreme Journey. Well, guys, that's it for my unboxing and first impressions of Michael Kors Extreme Leather. I think it's a really nice, solid fragrance. I look forward to wearing it more and kind of giving you guys more of an in-depth look at the the fragrance performance. But overall, if you like fragrances similar to Terra d'Hermes, then you'll really enjoy Extreme Journey by Michael Kors. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out today's unboxing and first impressions. And as always, thank you so much for your support of my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.